Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, remember, last time we finished, we were in the middle of Chapter 11, and Mr. B wouldn't let Lulu go, so she decided she was going to have to escape. Sniffing a watery sniff, Lulu said to the brontosaurus, Thank you, Mr. B. I do need some tissues. If you'll just let me down on the forest floor for a minute, I'm sure I can find a box of them in my suitcase. The brontosaurus lowered his head and his neck to the forest to the floor of the forest. Lulu slid off, stood up, and smiled a small smile. She walked to her suitcase, opened it, poked around for a while, and found, are you surprised, a big box of tissues. But instead of taking the tissues out, she put her sleeping bag in, snapped her suitcase shut, and started running. The brontosaurus stood stiff and still, as if he'd been glued to the ground, and then he started running after Lulu. But Lulu had darted off the path into the heart of the forest, into a part of the forest where the trees grew so close together that a creature as huge as a dinosaur could not fit. She zigged and she zagged and she zigged and she zagged through those close together trees while the brontosaurus looked for spaces to squeeze through. Look how Judith Theorsch used that dot, 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 the ellipses, to add suspense. She snapped her suitcase shut and dot, 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 started running. You can use that in your writing, too. He was trying his hardest to catch her, as hard as a mountain-sized creature can try. But she was leaving him farther and farther behind. Come back, little pet, come back. Lulu could hear him calling, first loudly, then softer and softer. Come back, little pet. I know you'll be happy with me. Come back, little pet. His voice grew softer and softer, and soon she could not hear his voice anymore. Since Lulu could not hear his voice anymore, she stopped running and she started walking. She tromped through the forest in silence, heading for home. But she wasn't swinging her suitcase, and she wasn't singing her song. And although she very much wanted to see her mom and her dad again and very much wanted not to be a pet, she felt kind of bad about the brontosaurus. And so do I. Because even though I'm the person writing this story, I don't like leaving him all alone, sadly calling, come back, little pet, come back. See how the author is talking? She stopped telling the story and she's talking to us. Chapter 12. But then, after maybe an hour, Lulu suddenly heard a different voice, a not-so-friendly voice saying, Hold it right there! And standing up on his two hind legs and blocking her path through the forest floor stood the black bear that she had stomped on yesterday. You hold it right there, said Lulu, and please... There was that P word again. Please don't keep shaking your clawy paws at me. If I have to stomp you, I'll stomp you. But I'd really rather not stomp you. I'd rather, she opened her suitcase and took out a jar of golden honey. I'd rather give you this if you'll just please get out of my way. What's going on with Lulu? She'd rather not stomp him? The bear took the jar of honey, opened the top, Dipped, his, dipped in his paw and slurpily licked it, mumbling something that sort of sounded like, thank you. Dipping and licking and slurping, he hurried out of Lulu's path and she continued tromping through the forest. Until another familiar, another not so friendly voice said, this time I'm eating you if you bonk me. Uh, sorry, this time I'm eating you before you bonk me. And there was the tiger, the silky, slinky tiger of yesterday, ready to pounce on her. Forget the eating and bonking, said Lulu, and try on this beautiful scarf. She pulled a long, floaty, bright green scarf from her suitcase. It matches your eyes, and I'll give it to you if you'll just please get out of my way. And the tiger, happily wrapping the eye-matching scarf around her black and orange striped neck, growled something that sounded like, thank you and slunk away, and Lulu continued tromping through the forest. Until 
Who does she meet next? Well, what do you think she, she met next? A wolf? A giraffe? A lion? Don't be ridiculous. She met, of course, she met, what else? The snake, who was hissing an even nastier hiss than he'd hissed the day before and warning her, this time I'll be the tighter squeezer. Lulu, looking disgusted, told him, nobody's squeezing anybody. All I'm doing is getting home today. And then she reached in her suitcase and pulled out a small flowered rug and explained to the snake, this is for you, and if you'll just please get out of my way. A soft rug to rest on whenever you feel like resting. The snake took the rug in his mouth and tried, at least I think he tried, to say thank you to Lulu, though it's hard to tell when a mouth is full of rug. In any case, he went slithering off wherever a snake goes slithering, and Lulu continued tromping through the forest. Okay, what do you think is going to happen next? We will find out next time in chapter 13.